round two of the 2017 UCI BMX World Cup Tour took place at the incredible facility of Papendal, the Netherlands. The training center is home to the Dutch Olympic team and has been hosting the World Cup Tour since 2011. Round one of the tour saw Frenchman Sylvain André squeak through at the line, stealing the win from Dutch national champ Dave Vanderberg. Winning a World Cup, like, it was the first time for me, and it doesn't happen every day even to do Sam and Connor and Mary, so it's special, and it was even more special for me. I was stoked to make the main event and got a second place. When I crossed the line, I was disappointed, of course, because I wanted to win. This time it was like this much in his favor, and maybe next time it will be like this much in my favor. The reigning Supercross champion Laura Smulders dominated the women's final, beating out Mariana Pajon, the Olympic champ, for the win. Really happy that I won the first World Cup here at Pavanal in front of the home crowd on my home track. It feels amazing. I've been um, riding and training hard for one month now, and I'm feeling like I'm getting there again. I want to do better than yesterday. I want to win everything. It's because I love it. It's my passion. So it's really easy to just go and ride again. The UCI has changed the race format in 2017, and now the riders have the challenge of back-to-back -back rounds. Yeah, day two. You know, it's these two-day races are tough. It's exhausting. and. Uh, it's a real mental battle, you just have to take it one thing at a time. Woke up and I felt a little tired, of course. We had a big day yesterday, long hours and then uh, riding again, but this morning I felt great. I'm really looking forward to it, feeling good, so hopefully I'm going to do the same as yesterday. Just great starts and smooth laps and we'll see what happens at the end of the day. The new format has also shaken up the running of the heats. The men now race a total of seven heats during the day, pushing their energy limits to the max. Yesterday was really draining. Um, seven pretty much flat out laps all the way through, which was really, really tough. But um, I've had a good night's sleep and just, I know everyone's feeling the fatigue today. So just going to fight with it and do the best I can. Well, I hope I have some energy left for today because it's a long day with the new format. Yeah, let's try to repeat. I at least do my best and do my best going to put me in a good spot, I guess. Nice weather again, so I think it's going to be awesome racing and an awesome crowd. The track here in Papadol is well known on the tour and recognized as one of the biggest and fastest courses in the world. It's a fast track. It's really big for racing, so you can pass, you can do a lot of stuff. But unlike the other tracks, there's only one way down. It's a towering eight meter high start hill. Coming down the big hill, the riders start off with a big triple, then a double, and then another huge triple jump as they head into turn one. I love jumping, big jumps. The triple in the first straight is awesome. On the second straight, the women go to the left while the men go to the right. The track's really big, especially the second straight. You have to be really focused on getting the backsides and keeping the speed. On the men's pro straight, they jump over the women's second berm and into a huge concrete turn. The corners aren't just your regular tight corner. They're big, everything's super wide open, so there's a lot of passing going on. A huge step up leads into the third technical straight. Legs start to burn down the third straight into the last turn. Then it's on to the final straight and then the finish line. It's full gas, as fast as you can go, no matter what. Riders go through round one and then a last chance qualifier to earn the chance to move on. The field is then cut in half with the top four going through to the single elimination rounds. The bottom four riders from the heats now go into the last chance qualifiers with the top four making it through to the next round. New day. Hopes to do a little better today. That's the goal. In the first of the men's round of eights, former world champ and previous Papandal winner Nick Kiemen jumped out to the lead with Kai Sakakabera hot on his heels. Kiemen crossed the line in first with Sakakabera in second and Olympic bronze medalist Carlos Ramirez from Colombia in third. Joris Dodi of France battled it out with Tuan Van Gent in heat number two. 
Van Gent lost his rhythm on the technical straight, but managed to hang on to qualify through. I know I'm one of the better eyes on the first straight, so I'm confident if I can keep the inside, I will be all right to make, uh, hopefully, another main. Dutchman Dave Vanderberg took control of heat four with a solid start from the inside lane. With a last-ditch effort to pass for fourth, Tanner Sebesta of the U.S. clipped Corbin Shiraz's back wheel and crashed out of contention. Justin Kimmon went wide on the third berm and clipped the back of Mitchell Shopman's bike, putting an end to his quest to qualify. In heat eight, Jared Garcia looked strong down the first straight, but his day ended quickly after bumping into Joris Harmson's bike in turn one. In the second heat of the women's round of eights, Felicia Stansel took an early lead as she, Bondarenko, and Reynolds all jumped a triple into turn one. But Bondarenko had the technical straight mastered, passing Stansel to take the come from behind win. In heat four, Gabriella Carrillo came undone on the third straight, putting an end to her day. Heat six saw Olympic champion Mariana Pajon blast out of the gate with her best start of the day. Taking the whole shot into turn one, the Colombian dominated the race to cross the line in first. After the round of eights, both the men and women go into their quarterfinals with the top four from each group going through to the semifinals. Mariana Pajon got a great gate in the first women's quarterfinal and built up a huge lead into turn one. Merle Smulders made up some good ground on the third straight, but the Colombian went unchallenged. Ruby Huseman failed to qualify after Matilda Bernard passed her at the line. Heat two was all about the series leader, Laura Smulders. Just another good gate, another good first straight, probably triple into the first turn, and then just keep it smooth from there and fast. The Dutch elite superstar rode to victory with Brazil's Priscilla Stavo making a great move on the pro straight to race in for second. Camille Mayer and Judy Ba also qualified through. Simone Christensen was on top of her form, taking the lead in quarter three. Australia's Lauren Reynolds jumped her way into second place on the pro straight. Russia's Natalia Suvorova and Canada's Drew Mickelson rode in for third and fourth. Felicia Stansel jumped her way into first coming on the outside lane and took a big lead into the second straight. It looked like Stansel would be unchallenged, but Natalia Bondarenko used a perfect run on the third straight to pass the American for the win. After battling through the earlier rounds, it was time for the men's quarterfinals. Almost just trying to forget about yesterday and just start again, take each race as it comes, and a good first straight's a big advantage on this track, keeps you out of the, the carny. In heat one, Argentina's Gonzalo Molino got the whole shot, but world champion Joris Dode turned on the heat to make it into the first berm with the lead. Nick Keeman found himself near the back of the pack, but went on the inside on the second berm and aced the technical section to make it through in third. Molina struggled to keep up his earlier pace and failed to make it through. In heat two, the Olympic champion Connor Fields came out of lane two, shutting down Sylvain Andre, who had the inside lane. Mahieu, Andre, and Shira worked their way around the course, trying to find a way to pass the Olympic champ. Shira then found himself quickly out of the race when he was forced off the track by Andre. Heat three was a tight race with half of the field jamming into turn one. Ramirez made a great move on the third berm to take the third, forcing Dean into fourth, where he qualified in a photo finish. Britain's Kyle Evans shut down Bodie Turner coming out of the second lane to take the lead in the fourth heat. Jeremy Smith looked strong riding in second behind Evans, but couldn't keep his speed as Van Gent and Turner squeezed past the American on the third straight. Things got worse when Jeremy Rincurl passed Smith on the inside of the third berm to steal away the last qualifying spot. After the men's quarters, it's time to stage the women's semifinals.
Semi One saw a clash of the champions with Mariana Pajon and Laura Smulders in lanes one and two. The golden girl, Mariana Pajon. Just try to feel like myself on the track. Just want to change some, some things. I'm still learning, I'm still um, in process, but I always do my best. From the Netherlands, Smulders. Everyone's fast out there, so maybe someone is gonna step it up today more than yesterday. Maybe someone is gonna be more fast. I don't know, uh, we'll see. There we go. This looks like a main event. The intensity was just too much for Smolders as she cased the first jump and fell behind the leaders. Judy Bao and Simone Christensen tucked in for second and third on the second straight. Pahon and Bao, one and two. Christensen closing the gap just a bit with Smolders by herself in fourth. Pahon coming through, taking these girls on a day trip. Smolders kept pace though and used her track skills to claw her way back into second at the line. I didn't really have a great lap. I collapsed a little bit in the bottom of the hill, gazed the first jump, and I was in fourth because I wanted a gate pick, of course, in the final, so went for it in that lap. Luckily, I finished second behind Mariana. To Bondarenko, Reynolds, Suvarova, Schriever, Stancil, Michelson, and the younger of the Smolders, along with Veinstra. Felicia Stencil, she looks like she's ready to fight for this. I hit the triple today in both rounds, and yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable, and I'm ready for it today. Waiting for the call. Merle Smolders stormed out of gate seven in semi number two, jumping the huge triple into the first turn. Australia's Lauren Reynolds had a bad start, but jumped the huge triple as the field hit the first berm. Lauren Reynolds taking it upstairs and getting rewarded, popping into second, leaving room for Stancil to get in there in that third spot. Felicia Stancil took the inside line and followed Reynolds through the pro straight. But right now, it's the younger of the Smolders taking it to the front. Bethany Schriever from Great Britain overtook Bondarenko on the third straight to grab the last qualifying spot. The official is Smulders, Reynolds, Stancil, and Schriever. With the top eight women now headed to their final, it was time for the men to battle through the semifinals. Tori Nyhog, lane eight, grabbing the camera. Next to him, Kimman. It's my home track. I've won it before. I want to make my way to the main, and we'll see from there. Sylvain Andre from France. I had good gates, good track speed all day. So, yeah, the confidence was just better and better. Current world champion, Georges Daudet, calm and cool. We're waiting for the call. Georges Daudet shot out to the early lead, shutting down Kyle Evans before turn one. Kimmon forced his way across the track from gate seven into second position as the group exited turn one. Right now it's Dade, Andre, and Nyhog with Kimmon in fourth. It's gonna be a race to the finish, but it looks like it's gonna be the world champ of Joris Dade. Round one winner Sylvain Andre hung on for second with Tori Nyhog in third. Just goes to show that you know the hard work's paying off, and that's a fantastic feeling. And uh, definitely going to take this into the next race. Heat yeah. two: Turner Fields, Van Gent, Dean, Matthew, Ramirez, Bernhardt, and Mir. Bernhardt from Germany. He's looking to make a name for himself. Anthony Dean, known for that horsepower. It's obviously cut through elimination now. It's just building for me, and I'm just going to take it one race at a time and slowly, slowly build. Next to him is Connor Fields, Olympic gold medalist. 
ready to go. In the men's second semi, Connor Field soon closed out Bodie Turner coming out of lane one. Mahieu trailed Fields around the track with Van Gent close behind. We have Fields, Mahieu and Van Gent with Mir in fourth. Ramirez had the third straight fully dialed and made up ground to work his way back into third. Jacob Bernhardt of Germany took a tight inside line on the third straight. The Colombian in for the third, Ramirez. Bernhardt kept his line to qualify through and fourth. The official is Fields, Matthew, Ramirez, and Bernhardt. It's now time for the main events as we head back up to the top of the start hill where the women are ready for their final lap. The 110 bike of Smolders. It's just the same thing. I'm just gonna do my best and hopefully make it on the podium again. The golden girl, Mariana Pajon, giving you all a wave. I wanna be better than yesterday. I wanna be confident. I wanna feel like Mariana is riding, like no one else. Here we go, waiting for the call. With the hopes of winning two races in a row, Laura Smulders came out of the gate ahead of Mariana Pajon. Pajon got crowded out on the first straight and quickly lost momentum. Reynolds then jumped her way into the first berm with Simone Christensen both fighting side by side for the third podium position. Right now it is Smolers and Pajon one and two with Reynolds pulling up for three as they head into the second corner. It's going to be Smolders leading this until the finish line with Pajon with the number two. Smulders rode a near-perfect lap to capture her second win in a row with Pajon riding in for second. Reynolds and Christensen fought it all the way to the line where a photo finish gave Reynolds the third place overall. I was in lane two next to Mariana again, so the roles were switched from yesterday. Had a great gate, new record time down the hill. First straight was good and I saw Mariana next to me. I could jump, but I didn't. I was like so scared, like didn't want to pull it. After the second jump, I thought, well, I'm not gonna make the same mistake that she did yesterday. So went over, I jumped into the inside. Went into last turn and I heard the crowd again. And halfway the last turn, I started screaming myself. I thought I had it. I was really happy, stoked to get over the finish line. I couldn't believe it that I won two World Cups in a row at my home track in front of this crowd. Just amazing. Once I crossed the finish line, I looked behind me and I didn't see Meryl and oh, she congratulated me and I was like, what did you get? And she's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so well, she's stoked on her final, of course. I was stoked for her. I'm stoked for me, of course. She's proud of me, I'm proud of her. It's great to have a family like this, yep. The top eight elite men were now locked and loaded for the start of the men's main event. Number 49, Tori Nyhog. Yeah, I decided to pick outside in the main and give myself a clean shot down the first straight and into the first turn. Next to him is Nick Heeman. It's just mentally it helps a little bit when you know like the crowd's behind you and when you line up on the gate and everyone's going wild. Next to him is the Olympic champion, Connor Fields. Being in the final is always good but uh, I wanted a little bit more today, so I you know, just really focused today and grit my teeth and got to work. Sylvan Andre, yesterday's winner and main event maker. Whatever happened today, I'll keep a good note from that weekend. I'm gonna try to keep that momentum going and, and do good today and next weekend in, in Belgium. Joris Daudet, we have a lot of return players in this main event, that's for sure. It's a, it's a stack field, you know, uh, a lot of lot of good riders. So you have to be uh, you have to be consistent on the gate on the first straight. Get ready for the call. Nick Kimmon pulled off a great start, but got pushed wide on the first turn. Connor Fields held the lead, but Joris Dode took the inside line to claim first as the group headed into the pro straight. Dode, Nyhog, and Fields one, two, and three. A track smart Tori Nyhog tucked in for the second. 
Kim and Ven made his way back into contention on the technical straight, but it was Fields who had the reserve to pump down the final straight into third. It looks like it's going to be the Frenchman Dode for the first. Yours Dode stormed in for first with Tori Nyhog in second. Wow, what a race. The official Dode, Nyhog, Fields, Kim and I had a good gate, not the best. Honor and, and Nick had a, a really good gate, so I was right behind them. Nick was coming strong from the outside. I was able to just edge him just a little bit into the turn, but we were pushing so far to the inside. Doris was able to kind of back off, tuck in, and get underneath us in the first turn. I saw a little opportunity in the first corner to go, and then I take the lead from there. Connor and Nick were, were battling the first turn. I just was able to swing underneath them. Got a good drive out and uh, pulled up close to Joris on the second straight. I stay focused on, on, on my line and then uh, try to be smooth and don't do any mistakes. I was able to hold on to second and it feels great to be on the podium again. It's a, it's a special feeling. That was my first World Cup win, so I'm really I'm ready pumped tonight. With back-to-back -back wins in both rounds one and two, Laura Smulder sits atop the table with 300 points. Mariana Pajon sits back in second with 210 points, and Judy Baugh is just five points back in third. The men's standings are a lot closer with only 30 points separating the top four. Joris Dode and Sylvain Andre are tied for the lead with 220, while Tori Nyhog sits in third and Connor Fields in fourth. It's always amazing to win a World Cup. It's one of the biggest races in BMX, so I'm really happy. My parents was here too, so it was a, it was a pretty special. And then uh, Sylvain won yesterday, so uh, that was the first World Cup win for France. It's pretty amazing, you know, to uh, take back to back for France. So, uh, so yeah, it's good. To come away with a podium on the second day is uh, is great for confidence, and that's a fantastic feeling. And uh, definitely going to take this into the next race. I really wanted to get one double. That would be like the ultimate thing for this year. Next two world champs, of course. So I've got the double and next week we've got another World Cup. So hopefully you can do it again. That's it from Papendal in round two of the World Cup Tour. The riders will remain in Europe, traveling across their border into Belgium to race at Circuit Zolder, home of the 2015 World Championships. I'm feeling great, I'll rest up this week and then we'll see you again next week. But um, yeah, double win at Pavanagh, it's just awesome. I feel like I'm getting there. I did really improvement on my second day of racing and I know Solid is gonna be better.